Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jimmy Cole, but I'm an equipped bench press specialist in hot pursuit of a 1400 pound bench press. Today, uh, the subject matter is going to be how to fix a lockout in bench press, how to make your triceps stronger, and how to properly apply said stronger triceps to the bench press. So let's go ahead and get started. For anybody that's interested in powerlifting or just bench pressing in general, strength sports, the bench press has been kind of that king of the lifts, kind of that lift for manhood. And I'm quoting Scott Mendelson when I say that. And one of the key things to building a big bench press is obviously the triceps. The triceps, or rather the whole arms, are the key to the bench press. And I'm also quoting Louis Simmons by saying that as well. One of the most common places where people tend to fail a full range bench, max effort bench press, whether it be in training or in the, uh, at a competition, is oftentimes the very top. They can, they can launch the bar off their chest. When they get more than halfway up, the bar stalls, and that's where people tend to fail the lift. If someone's problem area was right off the chest, I would almost argue that it's probably upper back tightness or upper back strength, not so much chest or shoulders as it's commonly believed to be. But failing a lift at the halfway mark, and especially at the top, is all about the triceps. I myself do not have enough triceps or upper back. I argue that nobody does. We can always have stronger back, stronger triceps. So let's get into some details on exactly how to train the triceps for a big bench press. Before I get into details about how I train triceps, some of the most common ways to train triceps for big bench presses, I'd like to talk about it first, how to properly apply the triceps to the bench press. You could have the strongest triceps in the world and still not be that good at bench because you are not properly applying the triceps and the bench. Bench press has been commonly referred to as like a chest exercise, maybe some front delts, commonly used as bodybuilders to build up the chest. Uh, even though flat bench itself really just builds up the outer lower chest, kind of gives you that shallow look, which is why they train incline work, decline work, uh, a lot of dumbbell work, things like that. Chest isolation movements like pec deck or cable crossovers. But when pursuing the biggest bench that you can possibly do, it's built by two things the triceps and the upper back. Really and truly, the bench press is a full body lift. We're using our lower body, we're bracing with our core, we're using our upper back, we're using our delts, chest, triceps, arms, everything, squeezing the bar as hard as we can. It becomes a full body lift when you're trying to lift the most weight as possible. But still, one of the most key factors to building a big bench is those triceps, but you have to learn to apply them correctly. Even though it's called a bench press, um, I commonly say that I, I think people have it backwards because you, oftentimes in powerlifting you hear the cue to start ripping the bar in half, start trying to take the bar and literally s like squeeze it and rip it apart in order to activate the triceps. So you start with a press and then this cue usually comes into play at the top portion of the bench, start ripping the bar apart, squeeze it, squeeze it apart. Uh, I argue that that's actually backwards. I think that you should activate the triceps in the beginning of the lift, not just the end. Therefore, you will have a tricep dominant press. People start benching with their chest way too much, activating with the chest way too much, and that's commonly how you see uh, people tear in their pecs. Either a full rupture or a belly tear, and it's oftentimes during a raw bench press. If you launch with the chest, you rely too much on the bigger chest and shoulder muscles, that's where you end up getting the tears. We have to learn how to use the triceps. And one of the ways, one of the easiest ways to learn that is by using boards, which we'll talk about as a tricep builder uh, in a little bit. But when you come down with a pair of, uh, set of boards or like a bench block stuck on a bar, you can come down to the chest, pause for a split second, and learn how to activate the triceps and initiate the drive from the arms and not from the chest. In the bottom of a lift, most often times, You'll see people act, activate from the chest right here. So I'm gonna activate with the chest. Boom, right there. What I wanna to try to do is to actually activate in the bottom from the triceps. So you've touched and now you want to activate the triceps, try to spread the bar apart, get the triceps flexed and activate it. And now you can initiate your press and you will have initiated the lift with the triceps rather than the bigger, uh, more overpowering pecs and reduce the risk of injury. It's rather a tricky thing to learn. It took me a very long time to learn how to initiate with the triceps at the bottom of a lift. And once you have learned how to activate the triceps in the bottom of the lift, not just at the end, now all the work you do, all the tricep extensions, all the board work, all the whatever you do for triceps, 
you will actually be able to apply those stronger triceps in the bench and make the bench go up while protecting the pec and the shoulders. And this goes for both raw and equipped lifters. Now that we've talked about activating the triceps in the bench properly, not just at the end, but at the beginning of the bench, here are some common things, uh, common movements that I use, as well as other very established means of building big triceps in the sport of powerlifting that's been used for many, many, many decades. Number one, as we mentioned uh, in the previous discussion about activating the triceps is of course, boards. Board work, uh, board press, as it's commonly referred to as, has been used since the original West Side Barbell out in California by uh, uh, the owner was Bill Peanuts West. Uh, they've been a part of the sport for a very, very long time and building big bench presses, both raw and equipped. As I said, often referred to as a board press, I like to refer to them as board extensions. Oftentimes when I talk about board extensions or I program board extensions in with my athletes or something like that, a lot of times I get confused. I explain to them that it's, it's what you know as a board press, but it's what I, I'm calling it a board extension because I want you to try to uh, rewire your thinking when it comes to the board work. If you tell an athlete that all you're doing is touching the board and pressing, that's all they're gonna do. They're gonna touch the board and they're going to press the bar. Whereas instead, I want you to touch the board and actually try to extend, use the triceps as this is an extension, so is board work as an extension. I've used boards since uh, I started competing back in 2008, 2009. It's been a staple of my training both in and out of my equipment. The overall purpose of boards is to, of course, train the triceps, or you also, if you have a weak spot in the bench, if you're a weak two inches off the chest or two inches from lockout, you can put an appropriately sized board in there to work that weak area of the bench. The great reason to use boards is because you can lift more weight with a shorter range of motion. So you can, every, everybody on the planet, I argue, uh, could probably do more on the bench with a two board than they could full range. It's a great way to desensitize yourself to heavier loads, overload the CNS, and of course, adapt your bones and connective tissues and muscles to heavier loads, making them stronger, and therefore you can apply that, uh, gain strength, to the full range bench press. One of the other ways to train triceps, one of my absolute favorites, one of the things I've been kind of more known for in the last couple of years is the reverse grip bench press. Didn't get really popular or well known in the sport until uh, the 90s when Anthony Clark came along. Anthony Clark only competed with the reverse grip bench technique. In the late 90s, he would be credited uh, with, an eight, with the history's first 800 pound bench press. That lift was later uh, declined and reversed the decision, so he was not, in fact, credited with that 800 pounds. Uh, the first 800-pound bench press would not happen until 2002, I believe, uh, when Ryan Canelli came along. Reverse grip benching is just what it sounds like. Instead of having a pronated grip on the bar, you have a supinated grip on the bar. I, in fact, cannot uh, fully supinate a, uh, a, on a on a straight barbell, so I actually have to split the difference, and I carry the bar uh, between these two fingers, uh, people often refer to it as the talon grip or the fork grip. So that is my preferred style of bench pressing. Again, not holding the bar full supinated, but again, holding the bar between the trigger middle fingers and the bar rides vertically down the palm in a very secure manner just like that. But benching backwards nonetheless, it has been known for a very long time since the 90s, since the era of Anthony Clark in pursuit of that 800 pound bench press, that the reverse grip bench is a massive tricep builder. In particular, it stresses the long head of the triceps, which is the head of the triceps that's uh, credited for most of the strength when it comes to big heavy bench pressing. The outer head, the lateral head, the lazy head as the bodybuilders call it, doesn't do a whole lot. It looks kind of cool, that horseshoe. It's called the long head because it's attached, at the, it's the only one of the three tricep heads that's attached at the elbow, but it also goes into the back. It's not attached at the top of the humerus, it's attached into your back. Hence the name, the long head of the triceps. Another adva major advantage to the reverse grip bench press besides being a, an extraordinarily big tricep builder is it's also in, in some ways safer. One of the biggest issues with uh, bench pressing with pronation is internal rotation on the shoulder. You have the ability to internally rotate and bench with your elbows flared out to the sides, which can be very, very damaging to the shoulder structure. When reverse gripping, you are in fact locked into an internally rotated position with the shoulder. 
and you cannot physically flare if you tried. And you, you are tucked the entire lift, which is one of the reasons why it's also a very, very effective tricep builder. I could personally go on for days about reverse grip bench pressing and what it's done for me personally in my career. I encourage everybody to try it. Try benching backwards. If you can't do the full supinated position like Anthony Clark, try the fort grip or the talon grip. Hold the bar between your middle and trigger fingers. Give that a try. It's a little uncomfortable in the palm because all the weight sits right on that bone, right in the palm. It can be a little uncomfortable. Once you get over that part, it's actually pretty cool. Another very common way to bench press besides just doing the normal wide grip pronation is doing close grip bench. Close grip bench is just what it says. You take a closer grip on the bar. Generally speaking for me, when I consider something close grip, I like to see the trigger fingers just outside the smooth of the bar. Uh, maybe a couple of finger widths out from the smooth of the bar. But taking your grip from trigger fingers on the rings and bringing it in one finger width is not, in fact, close grip. That's still a very, very wide grip. If you want to do close grip, actually bring it in, make it close grip. Very effective way to train the triceps. Uh, it also increases the range of motion of the bench press. You have a further distance to push. To be honest, uh, close grip bench press does, does not have a huge part of my training anymore. It was actually overtaken, overthrown by the reverse grip bench press in terms of effectiveness, uh, comfortability, and just overall performance. I still will do, occasionally do close grip, uh, full range bench presses, normally in a, in a protective piece like a slinger, and also sometimes uh, rack lockouts, another variation you can do with close grip or off the boards, the aforementioned boards we talked about earlier in the video. You can also take the close grip bench press onto the floor, do floor presses. You can take them on incline, on decline. A lot of different ways, a very good way to train up your, uh, change up your training is just to simply change your grip, go from going wide all the time to going narrow, train the triceps, uh, push a further distance, longer range of motion. Very effective way to train the triceps. Now getting into uh, singular joint movements. Everything we've mentioned before has been a bench press style movement, a multi-joint, a compound movement. Now we're getting into the single joint movements. Uh, things like tricep extensions with dumbbells, uh, tape presses, rolling dumbbell back extensions, often referred to as darts. Uh, made famous by the West Side guys and Louis Simmons, and then later Ryan Cadelli as well. For me, I I I, had, I don't do a lot of straight bar extensions anymore. Uh, I can't. I physically cannot do. I, as I mentioned about the reverse grip bench press, I cannot grab a straight barbell in a supinated position, a curling position. My joints, my body will not allow me to do that. It's actually very painful. Adversely, I cannot do extensions on a straight barbell anymore as well. If you think about it, when we walk, we walk with our palms facing our bodies like this. This is how we walk. We don't walk this way. We certainly don't walk in a supinated hand position either. A natural joint alignment is with your palm facing your body. If you take a straight barbell and affixate your joints in a very unnatural position and then put weight on top of that or weight on top of it this way, uh, could actually be very, very damaging to the joints. So to copy the natural body alignment, the natural joint alignment of your arms, things such as uh, dumbbell extensions with your palms facing, as in the dumbbell rollbacks or those darts I had mentioned, that's a very natural way to train your triceps while maintaining natural joint alignment. I still do uh, barbell extensions uh, normally off the floor, dead stop extensions off the floor, but I use one of those wavy, uh, easy curl bars as they're called, which allows me to not be fixated on a straight bar this way. I actually have some cant in my hands and my joints, which allows for more natural position and it does not destroy my wrists and elbows. There's a laundry list of different variations that you can do with single joint movements. You got the push downs with the pulleys, you got the ropes, you got all these different attachments, different angles. You can do them standing, you can do them laying on the ground, on an incline bench. There's all of these different ways and uh, things that you can uh, change it up and use pulleys as well for the triceps. But right now, I'm just kind of listing the ones I primarily use. Push downs are great, pulleys are great. Uh, it's a great way to add variety into your training. Uh, pulleys are not as effective as for building a lot of strength as are dumbbells and barbells and free weights. I still use pulleys for strength uh, in some ways, some shapes or forms. I'll do single arm uh, pulley press downs or extensions uh, to fight imbalances. If I'm noticing one arm is getting more fatigued than the other, or I'm using my right dominant hand more than my left, I can actually train the left side of my body more by doing one arm uh, extensions with the pulleys. And slowly over time, I'm adding hundreds of extra reps 
to my weaker side, effectively bringing up that imbalance between my left and right. So that's pretty much gonna do it. I don't have a lot of uh, high variety. I used to do all the different movements, the kickbacks, the pulleys, the straight bars, the wavy bars, all these different things. I still, uh, every now and again, will add a very random crazy tricep movement like the Elite FTS has a lot of valuable information on crazy tricep movements. Ryan Canelli has a lot of tricep movements that I've uh, gotten inspiration from. But all in all, I've weeded out a lot of different movements over these last 18 years of lifting and 14 years competing and utilizing the ones that I have found most effective for me. But do not limit yourself to just what I've explained in this video. I have listed some very, very effective tricep work from boards to reverse grip bench press to some single joint movements such as double extensions and barbell extensions. All in all, you have to find what works effectively for you. Give some movements a chance. Try the tape press. Try a JM barbell press and see which ones really add value to your training and which ones make you brutally strong. To reiterate about parts of the triceps that are most important for strength, I talked a lot about the long head, the outside head of the triceps. You also want to work uh, movements that train the bottom of the tricep down here near the elbow. There's a big uh, tendon you can see right there going across the elbow. Those are the areas that you really want to hit. And then at the end of it all, you also have to train heavy. Just doing sets of 15 to 20 all the time is not going to cut it. You have to train heavy sets of five, heavy sets of 10 to 12. I vary my sets and reps all the time. I do sometimes I do high reps, sometimes I do low reps, sometimes I do both. Don't limit your triceps to just one style of training. Train everything. By training the different rep ranges with different weights, you are effectively hitting the different types of muscle fibers that make up the human body. And in endless pursuit to get that higher and higher bench press, we have to continue to work the triceps more and more effectively, more efficiently, and just more. Myself, I do not believe I have enough triceps. I don't think I'll ever have enough triceps. So there you have uh, effective ways to train the triceps and also train the lockout. Don't wait to activate your triceps at the top of the lift. Try to activate them in the bottom of the lift. Don't wait till the end. It might be too late under a max load for you. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't checked out the Kolb Strong Scholarship, it is our nonprofit organization raising money for the younger generation of powerlifters. For every $1,000 we raise, we sponsor one young athlete in the teenage to junior divisions at the start of every new year. So we accept the applications from January 1st all the way to the end of the month of January. And then the start of February, we start cutting checks. This year, we've raised almost $11,000. We have 11 young athletes that will be getting checks from us at the beginning of the year. I also want to shout out to one of my biggest sponsors, Anderson Powerlifting, your powerlifting superstore. If you need bench shirts, squat suits, deadlift suits, knee wraps, knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, chalk, ammonia, they have it. Use code Colbstrong at checkout for 10% off your order. Also, Pharrell Customs. Rob is an extremely nice guy. He's a really good friend of mine. Him, Tiffany, his mom, and Logan, those four are an awesome team and a great ambassadors to the sport. Unleash Strength Gym in Manassas, Virginia. It's the gym I've been lifting at since day one, since opening day three years ago. Joe and Margo Strada, awesome people. They give and they give and they give and they give a shit about you. It's where I built my entire crew, all the lifts, all the thousand pound benches I've done in the last three years have been at Unleashed Strength with my crew, with my family. So thank you all very much. And Alive by Design Chiropractic Care in Fredericksburg, Virginia. My friend Jericho taking care of me, keeping my body in one piece. If I got aches and pains, things I don't know about, he fixes them right away, keeps me in one piece. So thank you, Jericho, for all you do. I really appreciate you as well. And thank you all for tuning in and checking out my video on how to make your lockout more effective, more strong, bigger and stronger triceps. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Tune in next time for more bench press information and tips from me, Jimmy Kolb, and again, in a very hot pursuit of getting that 1,400 pound, that very elusive 1,400 pound bench press. Until next time, stay strong.